I have been inspired more thematically when it comes to the films that I have made. Like for an example, the avalanche incident, what kind of questions does it raise? And uh, as you said before, I think it raises questions about gender and the roles that we have in a couple relationship. Uh, and I think that human beings love looking at monkeys because we are reflecting ourselves in looking at them. And we are seeing someone that is close to ourselves, but we strip down the culture and look at Christian more as a primate, a monkey that is uh, with culture, that is trying to deal with life. What are we dealing with? In which way are our movies creating a behavior? Because movies create behavior, art creates behavior, everything creates behavior basically. I think we can attack also our own world, we can then attack the cinema world and ask ourselves questions of what we are doing. Are we doing it out of ritual and do we break through that convention and do we actually say something that is important and interesting? Is this really in contact with the world or are we just playing roles? You know, the protagonist is the hero and then the antagonist is the bad guy. And that is a very simple way of explaining the world because uh, if we end up in a, in a specific situation uh, where we don't know what to do, then we've suddenly become the bad guy. In, every time I make a film, I want to challenge myself. Uh, I believe in this humanistic project, but when I'm uh, pushed into a corner and I end up in a dilemma, and when I'm trying to live up to my morale and my ethics, that's when it becomes interesting. So I wanted the main character was to be someone that believes in humanism and believes in an equal society and at the same time I wanted to challenge him and uh, putting him up to obstacles and, and hard situations when he doesn't know really how to handle them as a human being. Because I think that very often when we are looking on how films are told we have like a protagonist and an antagonist. You know, the protagonist is the hero and then the antagonist is the bad guy. And that is a very simple way of explaining the world because uh, if we end up in a, in a specific situation uh, where we don't know what to do, then we've suddenly become the bad guy. So I'm trying to find out those, those setups that makes it possible even for me when I'm sitting there and writing it that, I, oh my God, I would also do this now. Uh, and I think it, as, as, as well that I think it's very important that we directors and people are, that are in the movie industry are self-critical and we dare to look at ourselves. What are we dealing with? In which way are our movies creating a behavior? Because movies create behavior, art creates behavior, everything creates behavior basically. And, and, and therefore you also have to uh, dare to look critical on yourself in the art. Um. Anything can happen in a movie when there's suddenly a monkey appears in an, uh, an apartment. And I think that, <laughs> I mean, I, I love monkeys. Um, uh, and I think that human being loves looking at monkeys because we are reflecting ourselves in looking at them. And we are seeing someone that is close to ourselves, but we strip down the culture. We take away the culture and suddenly we have the instincts and the needs just exposed in front of us. And that's why... I think human beings always have been interested in monkeys and look at Christian more as a primate, a monkey that is uh, with culture that is trying to deal with life. And that's just this like sociological perspective that I like in my films instead of building characters around psycho uh, psychological uh, answers, you know, or, or how do you say character answers that this person behaves like this only because he's him. Uh, but this person behaves like this because he's a human being and he's in this position uh, and the, the setup around him uh, makes it possible for him to do these things. But I look at him as myself, you know, you're struggling with different kind of situation when mm -hmm. your morale is uh, uh, questioned and uh, trying to put uh, Christian in situations when they have to deal with this uh, on an everyday level as well as a quite extreme level. But um, uh, I think that the consciousness and those um, uh, qu questions uh, about morale and things like that, we always are having an inner dialogue with ourselves in, in, in many, many, many situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we go do good and sometimes we do bad and sometimes we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is something that is very specific with human beings that we 
are super sensitive when we see injustice, when we see an unbalance, when we see something that is unfair. We get very, very provoked. Is that what inspired the film in some sense? It seems like you like to write about a question and then find the answer through the film. I, I guess um, I have been inspired more thematically when it comes to the films that I have made. Like for an example, the avalanche incident, what kind of questions does it raise? And uh, as you said before, I think it raises question about gender and the roles that we have in a couple relationship. And um, since I am a man, of course, I'm, I'm also using my own life to try to tell the, the, the movie. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, so more thematically, I think that I have been inspired of, of sociological studies when it comes to crisis situations. Like, for example, um, uh, I read a study about airplane hijackings, and you can tell from this study that the frequency of divorce is extremely high after airplane hijackings. And it, some, it says something of, of, of the expectations that we have on each other when it comes to crisis situations and that we are getting disappointed that, um, for an example, a husband doesn't act like an action hero uh, when it comes to real life. I think that yeah, we are working with a visual medium and we're trying to express ourselves in a spectacular way so it's amusing to look at it and that the images actually mean something, that we are trying to compose something that where the image in itself creates thoughts and like, uh, like paintings or thinking more like in, in, in that way. Uh, so, and I have been quite happy with like, yeah, the scene in the trash I'm super happy with. Uh, and, and the goal was, of, for, of course, to step up the film and make it a little bit surreal. Um, and when you sometimes find these surreal elements and, and uh, play around with them, they become very visual. You know, I've been traveling around going to many uh, museums for contemporary art. Uh, and uh, there's something, an, an expression that's called in the white cube when it comes to contemporary art. And everything. You know, then you walk into a room and then there's like a couple of piles of gravel on the, on the ground and then there's a couple of mirrors and that is ex actually what you, what you meet when you go to those museums. So I think it made the art pieces even more trivial. Uh, so yeah, we're trying to attack that world a little bit and make them ask questions about what are we doing, uh, you know? Uh, yeah. Is this really in contact with the world that is outside the walls of the museum, or are we just doing things out of a routine? And uh, do we do we need to question this convention uh, on what we are doing? Uh, and I mean, uh, yeah. So, like, attack that. And I think we can attack also our own world. We can then attack the cinema world and ask ourselves questions of what we are doing. Are we doing it out of ritual and? Do we break through that convention and do we actually say something that is important and interesting or are we just playing roles? So. And yeah, what, what do you hope happens tomorrow? I mean, when you're sitting in there, do you, do you like watching it with an audience? Uh, no, but you're nervous, of course. Uh, as I said, I have done a lot of test screenings, so I know quite much about how the audience reacts to the film. Uh, <laughs> But I hope for a good screening. You know, there are good screenings and there are uh, screenings that are less good. And uh, an audience that is... I want to create films that is a little bit dangerous, you know, so you don't know where they are going. So the audience has to be a little bit insecure. They have to be on their toes because we don't know if the film is going to take us like so far that we never expected it or in which direction we are going. I don't want the audience to know that. So it, it has to be a certain kind of tension in the in the room where people are also feeling a little bit afraid. Uh, so I hope that we get that like presence of the audience. And so for writing the square, uh, how many pages was the script? I don't remember now. Was it 124 or something like that? I think uh, normal. Yeah. Normal. it is normal. Yeah, normal. yeah. yeah. 110 is normal, yeah. I guess. But, but I write in a more literary way uh, first. 
So, uh, and then I have someone doing an American standard script out of that, uh, the first script that I'm writing. But I like much more to write about um, in a literary way where you can write where, what the characters are thinking and things like that. Things that is quite hard to show uh, when it comes to a visual product. But so I write in a kind of different way. And both of the scripts that I've been doing actually have been published as novels also, The Force Majeure and The Square. So. I love to do casting because I also use it as a part of the writing process. So what I do, for example, one of the scenes is called the bill scene. And it's a man and a woman sitting at a restaurant. The bill comes on the table. Who will pick it up? And here we have some gender expectations that the man should pick it up. Uh, and I was trying out that scene. I was playing the female part sometimes. And sometimes I was playing the male part towards uh, the female actors. And, uh, and, and I did improvisations around that setup. And it was so interesting to see what the actors were adding. And I think that Charles Bedin was super in putting pressure at me as a man, making oh. me feel like you know, should I lost all my malehood. Yeah. And I think Harry Dickinson in that scene was, um, um, how do you say, expressing the di dilemma you feel as a man. You want to stand up for yourself, you know, but at the same time, you definitely don't want to lose your malehood. So it's, it's something delicate and fun with that situation that I used when I was doing the casting. And I was doing this in Paris, in uh, Berlin, in Stockholm, in LA, in, yeah. in New York. And it was, from a cultural perspective, it's interesting to see how they reacted differently a little bit in, in the different countries. In the US, as a man, to not pick up the bill that is like, you don't go there, you know, the, the, the men there had mm. such a problem to deal with that scene and not pick up the bill. And it was interesting because in France, uh, I think it was two of the female actors, they said, uh, well, I will make love to you tonight, <laughs> why don't you pick it up? So it was so interesting how the currency of sexuality and beauty was in, uh, uh, like in, a, in, a, in a normal couple relationship situation. What is the triangle of sadness? Well, uh, the, the title actually comes from a term in plastic surgery that is like that you have a wrinkle in between your eyebrows here. And in Sweden, it's called trouble wrinkle. So you have had a lot of trouble in your life and that's why you get this wrinkle. But don't worry, you can fix it with Botox in 15 minutes. And I thought it was like a funny contradiction and like to, to fix the surface and then feel better inside. And maybe it's true, I don't know, but it, that, it was like it's such a kind of dark, uh, humor in it that I like. Do you think overconfidence is the mark of an amateur? Uh, no, I think it can be good sometimes, you know, that you are like, come on, we're going to create something that is historical. We're going to make a scene that is like really, really good. That is a good uh, ambition for me. But, 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 but you also have to allow yourself to struggle with the scene and, and be able to, you know, dare to stay in that struggle.